Hey, I am Jeroen from Jeroen's Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how I make a cartoon in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to do that on this display and this is the Artist 24 Pro from XP Panel. This thing comes with a lot of buttons, so the first thing we'll do is program all kinds of functionality into these buttons to speed up our workflow. And after that, I'm gonna draw a dog who's drawing bones on this thing. You can find your pen tablet settings by clicking the icon in your system tray and you can also find it among your programs under the letter P. Of course I'm demonstrating this on a Windows 10 PC so if you're on a Mac and you cannot find it you, um, you can throw the thing out and uh, buy a PC instead. Um, here we are in the uh, pressure sensitivity settings you can um, adjust it to your likings and here we can program some functionality into our pen buttons the first one is set to um, eraser so let's leave it like that for now um, but the front button I really like to set to space because the space bar in Illustrator turns your cursor into the hand tool and the hand tool allows you to pan around your canvas so as of now we can move our canvas around by holding the front button so now the pen is all set let's go to the express key settings select the right program because you can bind different functionality to the same keys for all different applications the first button on the screen the top left one uh, i will set to undo and that is ctrl z and the one right beneath it i like to set to shift ctrl z and that is redo or undo the undo and the one to the left bottom i like to set to z that is the zoom tool and to the button right above that we'll assign the letter b from brush and this combination allows me to quickly switch between my zoom and my brush tool that is a good set to start with so we'll leave it at that and we still got plenty of keys unset so we can always uh, go back in here and uh, add some then let's assign some functionality to the dial wheels again make sure you select the right program before you're going to uh, tweak your settings and then we can uh, set, uh, for example, brush size to this wheel. Um, in Illustrator, that's the brackets. So we put the brackets in here and we'll name it brush size so we can uh, find it back later on. Now we got a second wheel and let's uh, set that one to zoom. And that's the plus, control plus and control minus. And of course that's not really needed because we already assigned the zoom function to our one of our express keys. But um, for the sake of this demonstration, we'll do it anyway. We don't have to click save, just OK. And let's see in Illustrator if it all works. Undo, check. Redo, check. Let's make a bigger brush. And we got a bigger brush. Zoom. And go back to brush again. And zoom again. And pan. And that is why express keys are such time savers. If, like me, you are working in Illustrator for about 200 years now, you probably know most of the shortcuts from the top of your head, but if you're new to the program, you can always go to Edit and look up the keyboard shortcuts over there on the Keyboard Shortcuts menu. And this list not only functions as your cheat sheet, but you can also change the keyboard shortcuts in this list. It comes with a handy search function, and not only you can find your tools here, but you can also find the shortcuts from 
all of the menu commands. So that's done, so let's close all of this up and we'll be back to Illustrator in a bit, but we'll need a sketch first. For sketching, I like to use a different app than Illustrator. You could do it in Illustrator if you want, but there are better apps out there for this particular job. I still like to use this old version of Sketchbook Pro, which you can't even get uh, anymore. But I really like the pencil, so I still use it for sketching. But you could easily use something else, like for example Photoshop, or even good old fashioned pencil on paper, like our grandpas did. Yeah, and of course you need to make a photo of that then, uh, Grandpa, but as long as you end up with something you can import into Illustrator, you're good. While we're sketching, we look for the correct pose and facial expression. We'll just try a few things out. And, uh, but this dog is uh, drawing his favorite thing, so uh, he must look really enthusiastic. A little bit fierce. Manic. We put some basic colors on there, nothing fancy, but um, it's still a sketch, but just to, uh, to see what works and what not. We're not going to put too much work in here because this is just our underlay. things the reason he is looking so excited and of course the XP pen logo and because a closed one is not as much fun than an open one we make an open drawer with some really important dog office stuff in there. And let's try out some colors and uh, add a little bit of shade here and there. And then um, our sketch is um, kind of finished. And we can go, after making this chair blue, we can go save it and go make a vector file out of it. Before we go into Illustrator, let me explain to you why you would want to make a vector file instead of a pixel file. What you see here is a vector file and a pixel file and at first sight they look exactly the same. But the difference is uh, a pixel file always has a maximum size on which you can print it. So of course you can uh, make your drawing on a very high resolution but you always have limits. The vector file does not have limits because it does not work with pixels at all. It works with calculations, so it's uh, crisp on every size. You can scale it up as large as you like. The quality will not go down and your file size won't go up. That is your main reason to choose vectors over pixels. Then one other thing, uh, when you start up Illustrator or any other program for the first time on a big screen like this, this screen has a 2K resolution. You might notice that all your panels look kind of small. That's why we go to Preferences User Interface, because here we can increase the size of our UI elements. Click OK. Illustrator is asking to restart so it can load everything from scratch. And now everything has a workable size again. So now we can hit what we're aiming for. All right, let's import our sketch and decrease the opacity of its layer so we can draw lines above it. And if you like to make optimal use of your pressure sensitive pen, you need to make a pressure sensitive brush in Illustrator. 
These don't come as a preset, so you have to make one yourself. I have a separate tutorial on this topic on my YouTube channel where I uh, show you how to go about this. Yeah, and what you see here is the other big benefit of vector lines. As you can see, uh, my sketch is all too rough here. So I'm uh, searching a little bit how I can best draw the pen. And I got the example in my hand. So um, <laughs> that's uh, easy, but I'm looking for the right perspective and um, the right dimensions. And uh, as you can see, it's quite easy to adjust the lines that you just made because you, uh, in Illustrator, you can um, select the individual paths and the individual points on those paths uh, of the lines that you just drew. And uh, every point you select, you can move to another place. And you can even um, make the lines thicker, you can uh, redraw them, you can uh, uh, pick up one of those points and um, reposition it or make a, a wider curve or a narrower curve and um, so it's it's providing a lot of flexibility that's uh, one of the reasons that i uh, really like working with vector lines so not just the scalability which is uh, also awesome i adjust the bar until i like it and i don't have to erase i don't have to redraw i just uh, reposition my points done inking our dog so let's adjust the sketch a little bit I'm lowering the opacity of the dog layer to almost nothing and now we can uh, clearly see this chair so we put this one on its own separate layer so uh, later on we can uh, move it independently which is always handy. And because I'm lazy, I'm not going to draw two chair legs, but um, I'm going to color this one real fast and copy it to the right. And the hind legs, we put on uh, their own separate layer so we can place them behind the rest of the chair. And of course, because we have enough to draw, we copy everything that we can which in this case are just these chair legs. It's a uh, good practice to put every item uh, of the drawing in its own layer. So we got a layer for the chair, we got a layer for the desk, a layer for the uh, screen and for the dog. And that gives you the possibility to move things around independently from each other. And when we are adding the color, we are uh, placing this on a separate layer underneath the lines. And when that's done, we collect these two layers, color and lines, into one new layer. So that's kind of a layer group. It's easy to add shadows just in between those two layers later on, which I'll show you in the end when we're done with all the rest.
Oops, we gotta shorten the share a bit, but that's not a problem. With a few lines we create the illusion of planks. When you're drawing like this in Illustrator, you're not using Illustrator like you you'd normally do. So you're not making shapes who have and a fill and a line to it, like a rectangle or a circle. We are just making lines, 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 and because there is nothing in between those lines, Illustrator doesn't know what it has to color between these lines. So we have to make paths between the lines or underneath the lines. And we can generate these from our drawing with the live paint function. So we copy our entire layer and give it an ugly basic line so we can see where the gaps are. Because we're going to help the live paint function to recognize everything by filling up these gaps. And we can be a little bit messy about this because in the end these lines will turn out to be invisible. I know this looks like a lot of extra work, but I promise you when this is done, it'll pay off big time. And okay, we're done. Let's select the entire bunch of lines and go to Object, Live Paint and click Make. And now it made all these Live Paint paths, which we can give a color fill. Let's give it a dog color. And now, because Illustrator recognizes these pads as a live paint pads, we can now use the live paint bucket tool, this one, and select the color that we like. And all we have to do is click on the right pads. What did I tell you? The preparation was a little bit of extra work, but it would pay off in the end. So we can be really fast now. What you see now is real-time footage. It's not sped up at all. This is uh, how, how fast I work. <coughs> I placed the light blue plane behind the dog so I can see which parts are maybe transparent instead of white. Same case for this bone drawer, we copy the entire layer and we make a live paint out of it so we can color it really fast and put the colors on their separate layer underneath the lines. And we repeat the same process for every element in the drawing, copy the lines to their own layer fill in the gaps, make a live paint, add the colors. But for the screen, I have a different approach. I'm using simple rectangles here, and I'm placing these exactly in the right place and in the exact size, because I use a photo under there. And then we are going to fill these uh, rectangles from the screen itself and from the buttons with the gradients. And as you can see, these gradients make it look kind of realistic and a thin dark and a thin light line next to each other will make a bezel which makes it look even more realistic and then let's change these buttons a little bit of course we only make one and the rest will copy again and then a few details and of course the most important part the bones And the finishing touch, the XP pen logo. And now we warp our 2D screen in the right perspective into our drawing. So it looks like our dog is working on a real XP pen artist pro. Then on the layer between the colors and the lines, we make the shadows 
And these are black with a transparency set to whatever percentage uh, looks nice. And that way we add a little bit of depth to our drawing. Now we got a floating chair here, so uh, until we place a shadow under it, because the shadow determines where the floor is. And so um, the chair is no longer floating in the air. Put a light gradient on the dog's fur and then we tweak the colors a little bit to make a bit more contrast between the dog and the desk. And after putting my initials down I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow to his face and to his uh, paw to make him pop a little bit more to add a little bit of a realistic effect to a very unrealistic drawing, which always is a nice effect, in my opinion. So that's that. This is the image, we're done. And I hope you like it. Drawing on the 24 Artists Pro feels very natural. The 20 shortcut keys are more than enough to put all your most wanted functions right under your thumb, which makes this thing super efficient. And the ability to program them different for each application makes it even better. There is little space between the tip of the pen and the canvas, the colors are great, the screen is a beauty and working on this screen resolution is a blast. Especially for its price, this piece of equipment is a no-brainer for anyone who is looking for a big screen and a great drawing experience. You'll find all the specifications and other info on the official XP Pen website. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it has been useful to you, or at least in case you already knew everything, that you enjoyed it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up or let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, bugger off! <laughs> no, don't hesitate to ask him. If I can answer him, I'll be happy to do so. And then there's only one thing left to say. Bye bye and have an awesome day.